I'm Lou McCallum um, and I build musical robots. Kick it. Mortima is a robot that we built to uh, conduct some research looking at maintaining long-term engagement um, with between humans and robots, namely in this case um, it's improvised music between a human pianist and a robot drummer. I mean, robots have been used in industry for a long time. It's only just recently that you're starting to interact with things with artificial personalities. But more and more they're kind of moving into spaces where they either need to interact directly with humans or to work alongside humans. Generally, people have found it hard to keep people engaged with robots in a social situation. So what we're looking at is using music, trying to frame the whole thing as a basic social interaction. Something that people regularly fit into their social routines. Normally, people kind of build social activity around, be a kind of good gateway to build a social relationship on between the humans and the robot. When you're playing with the human players, the jazz context or something like that, where you're sort of improvising along with each other, um, there's a lot of cues that you give off consciously and subconsciously that sort of aid the process of playing together. I mean, they can be visual, like little looks to each other, smiling at each other, nodding at each other. They can be, you know, musical cues that you're picking up with your ears. It's interesting to see what happens when some of those things have been taken away. Um, and you're playing with a non-human. You frame it as a very simple social interaction. So the robot will greet you. How shall both of us perform in future? It'll ask you questions and you can answer it using an iPad on the table. Awesome. The robot will look at the notes that come in from the piano. You can tell which note you've played, how long you've played it for, how hard you've pressed the notes. Um, so we get all this through from the electric piano. Then what we do is we look for what rhythms you're playing. Um, and try and play complementary rooms based on that. So the composition is done in real time in that respect. Interestingly, what we found is that when you include head movements in the study, people will spend longer than if you don't include head movements and actually increase the time that they spend as the study continues, uh, which is a reverse of what normally happens. Nice. All right, I'll count you in one bar. Are you ready? For the musical head movements, we've got one where he looks down the side, does a little jam like this. Um, it's just from me watching uh, hours of YouTube videos of drummers, um, so we get that one. Yeah, so he'll go down there and I'll give it one of them. When he's sort of going at it, putting the, the fast hi-hats in, or during a break that he's doing at the end of a sequence, that's sort of, you know, he's, he's well into it, or Stevie Wonder. It helps to bridge that gap that there is between a computer and a human. A nice one where he leads back, kind of elevated like that. It's a kind of transportation one. And that's when we nick from BB King. So the presence in the room, the face, whilst it's not convincingly human in, in any regard, I think it does help bring something that helps you to interact with it. How about we have a hold down, mate? Fantastic. The main things we hope to take away from this is that open-ended creative activities can be a good solid grounding for companionship between humans and robots. But also there's a lot of stuff that interacting with computers uh, can give you and that you can't get from interacting with humans, especially in the creative context. The idea of uh, composing stuff with algorithms and composing stuff with kind of higher abstract functions rather than with like individual notes and then interacting with them in real time either with a robot or a computer it opens up crazy new avenues um, of things to do and for music to have and for art to be made um, so I think that should be embraced. <laughs>